Hi, I'm Willem, and today I want to talk to you about movies and video games. I can see that some of you are already with me. Well, have you ever seen a movie trailer or a commercial for a video game and thought, I have to see that or I need to play that? And why do you think that you feel that way? Well, it's because the sneak peek that you've just seen was so good that you wanted more. That makes me think of today's big idea. Jesus shows us what God's kingdom is like. Jesus is that sneak peek. We can already see that it will be amazing, but I think we'll be blown away once we see the fullness of God's kingdom. Watch this. Did you know that in Newfoundland, a province in Canada, it gets so cold in the winter that you can play hockey on the ocean? What? Hi friends, it's Jen, and I'm so excited to be back with you today. I want to tell you a story about my own wedding that was a few years ago. It was a beautiful day, beautiful ceremony, and then we had our pictures taken before the wedding reception. Now, the only problem with this was that our pictures took way longer than anyone thought. So my reception ended up starting, and my grandmother did a beautiful grace for all of the food, and I missed the whole thing. I was 90 minutes late for my own wedding reception. I wanted to tell you this story because it reminds me of what we're talking about today, which is the story of Jesus at a wedding. And this reminds me of today's big idea. Jesus shows us what God's kingdom is like. Before we dive in, let's get a quick review of where we are in this series. We have been exploring the Gospel of John, John's view of Jesus, and where he talks about Jesus being God with us. John the Baptist called Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And we heard about Jesus inviting Philip and Andrew to follow him. And the first thing they did was go get their brother or their close friend to bring them along because Jesus is worth sharing with others. Let's read together in John chapter two. On the third day, there was a wedding. It took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Now this was kind of a big deal because weddings in Bible times didn't last a couple of hours like mine did. Sometimes they could last for a week. So running out of wine was actually a pretty big deal. Dear woman, why are you telling me about this? Jesus replied. The time for me to show who I really am isn't here yet. His mother said to the servants, do what he tells you. See, she knew who Jesus was, even though if others didn't know yet. Six stone water jars stood nearby. The Jews used water from that kind of jar for special washings. They did that to make themselves pure and clean. Each jar could hold 20 to 30 gallons. That is a lot of water. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the top. Then he told them, now dip some out, take it to the person in charge of the dinner. They did what he said. The person in charge tasted the water that had been turned into wine. Now I am I'm sure those servants that brought that water over were completely amazed that these gallons of water had turned into some apparently really nice wine. The man in charge of the dinner didn't realize where it had come from, but the servants who had brought the water knew. Then the person in charge called the groom to one side. He said to him, everyone brings out the best wine first. They bring out the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink, but you have saved the best until now. Now this was completely not expected in any sort of wedding celebration. So even at the very beginning of his ministry of performing miracles, Jesus was doing things in a little bit of an up upside down fashion. What Jesus did here in Cana in Galilee was the first of his signs. Jesus showed his glory by doing this sign and his disciples believed in him. After this, Jesus went down to Capernaum. His mother and brothers and disciples went with him. They all stayed there for a few days. So let's do a quick recap. Jesus was at a wedding with his friends and his mom. There was no wine left. Mary knew who her son was and what he was capable of. Jesus got a bunch of servants to fill up jars full of water and that water became wine. That's a pretty fantastic story. What's cool about Jesus' miracle is that he did it quietly and secretly. He didn't make it known to everyone at the wedding. He listened to his mom and the servants and his disciples knew too. That's it. 
The disciples were more convinced of who he was and the wedding guests could continue celebrating. It's probably not a coincidence that later on Jesus would use the idea of a wedding feast to describe the kingdom of heaven. In this situation, Jesus gave the wedding guests a taste of what God's kingdom is like and he gave a sign to the servants and his disciples of who he really was. God's kingdom is like a party that gets better the longer it goes on. We are invited into God's kingdom now, and Jesus shows us what God's kingdom is like. Well, friends, it was so great to hang out with you. I will see you next time. And this God story, the miracle of the wine, gave us a taste of what God's kingdom will be. And I love that Jesus' first miracle was performed at a party. Don't you think that this is a hint that heaven will be one big party? We don't know what heaven will look like, but we find some clues in the book of Revelation in the Bible. But let's watch this video, and then we'll chat after that. Growing up, I always wondered what heaven would look like. Was it a place up in the clouds? Was it like those drawings of angels worshiping God? Maybe it would be like a shining city made of gold and ruby. In the Bible, John tells us that God will create a city on a hill surrounded by a glassy sea. The streets are a place where God is worshiped everywhere, and the walls are covered in precious jewels. And in this place, there will be no tears, no pain, and no more suffering. While we don't know exactly what heaven or Jesus will look like, we do know the example that Jesus sets for us to live by. And through his words and his story, Jesus shows us what God's kingdom is like, and that it can start right here, right now. Jesus shows us how to love one another, and when we show kindness and help each other, even with something as small as helping someone cross a street, we are living out the love of Jesus. And amidst all the uncertainty in life, or when we don't know what to do, Father, we can ask God for guidance. Help me. We've seen Jesus ask God the Father to help him. We saw that he made time to pray, and we know that he followed the direction God gave him. So when we need help, or when we have to make choices, we can ask God to help us and show us where he wants us to go. Jesus showed compassion and he took care of the widows, the poor, those who were considered less important. And if there's one thing I know about God's kingdom, it's that the last will be first and there will always be enough for everyone. We read that those who mourn will be comforted and sadness will not even exist in God's kingdom. But that does not mean we have to wait for someday when we are with God. We can experience that here and now because we can show the love of Jesus to every person we know. Hi. God's kingdom isn't something we can fully understand. It's not something we could build without his help. But thankfully, we'll never have to because Jesus helps us. He shows us how to live and how to love, and he shows us what God's kingdom is like. That video was mind-blowing, and it reminded me that while heaven is gonna be spectacular, we can experience God's kingdom here and now in the way that we live and love others. If we can live the way Jesus modeled for us, we will get a taste of what God's kingdom is like. Let's break into our small groups and see what this will look like in our stories.